I did quite a lot of testing and demonstration in part 1, so please check out that video if you haven't seen it already. In part 1 we discovered that although a spinning gyro will stay upright by itself, if we tilt it it will produce a perpendicular force to its angle of tilt, known as gyroscopic precession. We can use this to our advantage by actively moving a spinning gyroscope in one axis to exert a force in a perpendicular axis. Using a solid state inertial measurement unit, which is typically used on balancing robots, we can measure the roll of a device and compensate to make it balance by moving the gyroscope in tilt. This worked fairly well and I was able to make a device which balanced on a single point fairly reliably. This is called a control moment gyroscope or CMG and there's plenty of information on Wikipedia and various other YouTube videos about this. However, as the gyro tilts, it will still cause some gyroscopic precession in yaw, the vertical rotation axis, and this is also true for a freestanding gyroscope. Please note that this is different from a reaction wheel which rotates a mass in opposite directions around a centre point. This causes an opposite force about the device to stabilise or balance it. So today I'm going to make a more challenging version of my active gyroscope balancer, using gyroscopic precession which is going to be much taller and with two inline wheels so it can move along the ground. This time the gyroscopes are mounted vertically and move in a vertical yaw axis. This will still give us a perpendicular force to roll the robot. We'll also be spinning them in opposite directions so that we can compensate for any gyroscopic precession in the other axis, plus there's two of them so we should get a stronger force to balance. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. This time I'm trying to make my gyroscopes better balanced by having individual pockets to put all of the ball bearings in that are going to give them mass, and I've got two circles of ball bearings. The pockets have got little points on, so a centrifugal force pushes the ball bearings outwards, they all should go to a known location. And of course there's two of those, and they've got lids which screw on to hold them together. I kind of overdid the amount of screw holes in the CAD, so one circle of screws will do, and it all adds extra mass to the gyroscopes. We've got two motors this time, one for each gyroscope, and these are 9225 160 kV motors. And of course, each gyroscope fits to each motor, and we've got a nice bracket to mount the whole thing on. So that seems to rotate okay, but unfortunately I got the holes too big in the 3D printed part, so my M3 bolts are loose, so it's been quite hard to get them to spin on centre. So let's spin one up and see how bad it is. It takes a little while for the gyroscope to come up to speed, and you can see there is some wobble in it, but it's not nearly as bad as the wobble that we had in part 1. So it does walk a little bit, but it doesn't really actively vibrate, and if I hold it in my hands I can hardly feel it, so that's pretty good. The main chassis for the robot is made in three parts because it was too big to fit on the bed, so I've got a bridge part that kind of joins the other parts together. And that's all just a push fit, although I did leave screw holes so that we can screw it together and make sure it doesn't come to pieces. I also added these rails down the side so we can give it some extra strength. And that all goes together very nicely. Thanks to Robotis for the Dynamixel servo, this is the same servo that we used in part 1. It's a fairly hefty Dynamixel servo and it's one of the spare ones from the really useful robot project that you should check out. And that fits neatly in my chassis so that we can rotate one of the gyros. The other gyro is just mounted on bearings on a bolt bolted into the chassis, and that fits neatly on the other side so that we've got our symmetrical gyros. I've put some gears on the top so that they both mesh, and that means when the motorised one moves, the other one moves in the opposite direction. In order for that all to stay together and not just to fall to pieces, there's a top on it with two more bolts set into two more bearings on the top of the two gyro motor mounts, and two pieces either side that hold it all in place in a kind of triangular arrangement. 
so those gears mesh really well and everything looks pretty good. And I've left a hole in the top so we can see those gears meshing because I thought they looked pretty good. I spent some time taking the electronics from the old device from part 1 and putting them onto this one, so we've still got that Arduino Mega with the Dynamixel Shield to control the Dynamixel Servo, and we've still got the Inertial Measurement Unit with its Arduino Pro Mini on the serial line. It is I2C and you're not really supposed to run I2C off the same circuit board, so that's my excuse this time. I've also got a knob so that we can turn up the volume on the two gyroscopes. And those are driven by two VESCs from skateboards, which are mounted on the other side there with a power splitter. I've mounted two inline skates in some 3D prints with bolts as axles, and those go on the bottom of the robot along with the battery, so it's got quite a low centre of gravity. However, of course, it won't balance on those wheels no matter how hard I try without the gyros turned on and without any active control. But before we try to make it balance, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Fanhome's Build Your Own R2-D2. Fanhome are a new brand dedicated to developing new collections and build-up models from officially fantastic brands like Marvel and Star Wars, as well as providing fully illustrated magazines with inspiring content. This stunning half-size replica of R2-D2 is 100% accurate and officially licensed by Disney. The model comes with detailed assembly instructions, so you can build your own advanced autonomous robot with interactive intelligence, powerful motors, and multiple modes and functions. R2-D2 is app controlled, either by an Android or iPhone, so it can react to human presence and respond to voice commands. All subscribers will receive amazing gifts during the subscription, including prints, a Darth Vader vinyl sticker, an R2-D2 mug and more. Early Bird subscribers will also receive an exclusive t-shirt when you use my unique promo code BRUTUM. Start your R2-D2 or one of Fanhome's other exciting collections today. Use the link in the description box below to subscribe. In your first package you'll receive two magazines and either two figures or two assembly stages with parts. From the second package onward you'll receive three to four figures or assembly stages with their corresponding parts and magazines. Don't forget to use the link in the description to subscribe, and use my exclusive promo code BRUTON to get your exclusive t-shirt for early bird subscribers. I thought the best thing to do would be just to power up those gyroscopes and assign the knob on the Arduino Mega to manually move the Dynamics or Servo, and move those gyroscopes in the yaw axis. And that means I can test whether there's enough force to balance it, which it looks like there is fortunately, because the whole thing has quite a lot of mass. In fact it looks like there's more than enough force, to affect the roll of the whole robot when I move those gyros in the yaw axis. Now taking the tunings from last time and modifying them a little bit, it looks pretty good. So you can see now as I roll the robot, the inertial measurement unit and the controller, which is a PID controller we talked about last time, move those gyros in the yaw axis. So now if we power it up, we should be able to get it to balance perfectly in the middle. Moving those gyros to exert force on the roll of the robot as it moves in the opposite direction, and so it should balance in the middle if we're very, very lucky. And that looks like it's working, and I can step away and leave it, and it'll also stay balancing if I push it. You'll notice I added some metal weights to one side again, and that's because the robot isn't perfectly symmetrical, so the Dynamixel servo is off-centre and lots of other things. Now the robot's taller, it's really apparent that the gyros will creep, and they'll keep moving in one direction until they reach the end stops, and then the robot will fall over. And that's because they can only exert force when they're moving, so if the set point of my controller isn't set perfectly to the centre of mass, which would be zero degrees if the robot was perfectly symmetrical, or the robot isn't perfectly balanced, then it won't stay balancing for very long. It's very hard to get a balancing robot to balance perfectly in the middle and find the exact balancing point. In the case of a two-wheel balancing robot, like my Sonic the Hedgehog robot, this would result in the robot slowly creeping forwards or backwards as it constantly tries to catch itself. However, in the case of our balancing gyro robot, it can't move sideways to do this, so the only way to try and balance off-centre is to constantly exert a force by constantly moving the gyros until they can't move anymore. The solution to this is an extra controller that observes what's happening and dynamically adjusts the set point, which in our case is the centre balancing point. If it were a two-wheel balancing robot, then we could just look at the motor or wheel encoder values, compare that with the remote control stick values, and then adjust the set point to make it drive or stay still when it's supposed to. 
This extra controller would constantly adjust the set point value to give us the desired motion and effectively give us a position hold function when we want the robot to stay still. We don't have any wheel encoders to read this time though, but we can still make an observation controller. Ideally, this would look at an overall average of the output, notice that the gyros are constantly having to move to hold the robot at the defined balancing point, and adjust that set point so it balances perfectly about the centre of mass. However, this time I've made the simplest version of this that I could think of, which just accumulates the output of the PID controller on every code loop, constrains it between 0.5 and minus 0.5, and uses that as the set point. This means that if the gyros move in either direction away from their midpoint, then the set point moves up to 0.5 degrees in the opposite direction, and causes the robot to move back the other way. This does cause a constant oscillation, but it means that the robot never gets stuck falling in one direction. It is pretty hacky, but it works, and now my robot can balance indefinitely, or at least until the batteries go flat, without creeping in one direction or the other. And of course my robot is on really free moving wheels, so it will still stay balancing as I push it up and down. I was thinking about motorising it so I could drive it along with radio control, but we all know that a motorbike or bicycle will easily stay upright when it's moving, it's standing still and staying upright that's the real challenge. I'm really happy with this project and the project I built last week and it's been really good to work out how to balance with gyros, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while and I think that's technology we can build into other projects. Perhaps we could build a one wheel balancing robot that balances like a two wheel balancing robot back to front and uses gyros to balance side to side and if we get the attitude of those gyros correct then we could probably actually use that to rotate as well by processing in one direction more than the other by tilting one gyro more than the other so that's something that would be quite good to experiment with. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this project if you want to have a go at building one yourself you can find that in the link in the description to this video to my github along with all my other open source projects so if you'd like to support me through patreon or youtube channel membership those links are in the description as well and youtube channel members and patrons get access to all the videos early up to a week early and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be involved in all of that discussion all right that's all for now